Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. It is indeed an honor to represent Brazil and to co-represent the Portuguese language with the Ambassador of Portugal in this event, organized by the Center for Critical Foreign Languages Education of uh, the Hankook University of Foreign Studies. I thank the organizers for inviting me to this session and for the opportunity to address you on this subject that is so dear to me. I would like to greet the chairperson, Mr. Hyun So Man, and of course, the director of the uh, CFLE, uh, as well as my fellow ambassadors and diplomats from Portugal, Poland, Doman, Kenya, and Turkey, with whom I am delighted to share this session today. As Ambassador Gonçalves has already pointed out before me, Portuguese is one of the most widespread languages spoken in the world by more than 200 million uh, people. It is also worth stressing that it's the most widely spoken language, as Ambassador Gonçalves also pointed out, in the Southern Hemisphere. It is an official language of nine countries spreading through four continents, as well as, as some of the international, of some international organizations, such as the European Union, the Organization of American States, the African Union, and Mercosul. In 1989, during the first summit meeting of heads of state of the Portuguese language countries, some years after the independence of the Portuguese language African countries, the presidents of Brazil, Portugal, Angola, Cape Verde, Guinea-Bissau, Mozambique, and São Tomé Principe decided to create the International Portuguese Language Institute, which today constitutes a part of the community of Portuguese language countries, which was founded in 1996. Timor-Leste joined the CPLP in 2002, after its independence, and Equatorial Guinea became its ninth member in 2014. This has been a forum dedicated to the promotion of the language, but also to polit political coordination and cooperation among its members. In this context, it's important to underline that most of Brazil's international cooperation for development is directed to its partners and fellow members of CPLP. Portuguese is a fascinating language that evolved from dialects, as pointed out by Ambassador Gonçalves, of Latin. As part of the Romance groups, it is quite similar to both Spanish and Italian and even closer to Galician, spoken in northwestern Spain. Centuries down in history, Portugal's empire spread the Portuguese language across the globe. From Brazil to Timor-Leste, to Brazil, from Brazil to Timor-Leste. So Portuguese speakers accounted for the first wave of globalization during the 15th and 16th centuries. Because of that, Portuguese influenced the lexicon of other languages, including some in Asia, such as Malay, Chinese, Japanese, and even Korean. Korean language borrowed from Portuguese some words like bread, pang, pão in Portuguese, and more recently, the idiom tabom, which conveys the idea that something has a positive evaluation. Portuguese is a global language. As UNESCO Director General Audrey Azoulay stressed last year on the occasion of the World Portuguese Language Day, May 5th, I quote, the Portuguese language builds bridges between peoples. With a transcontinental history which spans the centuries, the Lusophone world is today a melting pot of cultures. Portuguese is the language of creativity, 
of music from Fado to Bossa Nova, a language of literature, cinema, but also a language of science, innovation, solidarity, seas and oceans. I end the quotation. As a member of the vast Portuguese-speaking community spread across of all corners of the world, Brazil has an important task to fulfill in terms of promoting our language. The international promotion of Portuguese is a historic priority for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Brazil through its network of embassies, consulates, cultural centers, and more than 20 lectureships abroad. This brings me to one of the main topics I wanted to address today the newly opened Brazilian lectureship in Korea, perhaps the latest initiative abroad of this kind by the Brazilian government. It is part of a Brazil-sponsored program aimed at placing qualified Brazilian professors specialized in Portuguese language, Brazilian literature and culture in higher education institutes overseas. The first lectureship in Korea was possible as a result of our valuable partnership with Huffs, who ac accepted our invitation to host a Brazilian professor. I cannot stress enough the importance of the role played by the director of the Portuguese department in this university, Professor Lim So Ra, in uh, making this initiative a success. Professor Alexandre Ferreira Martins has just started his activities here at Huffs as a lecturer. He has been in Seoul since late last March and has been teaching Portuguese to Korean students. This CFLE event is very timely as it gives me the occasion to share with you in person the news of this recent and welcome in initiative. Professor Martins is expected to stay in Korea for the next two to four years. And I am very excited about the opportunities arising from his work at Huffs. I am confident that this new lectureship will foster educational, academic, and cultural cooperation between Korea and Brazil. I would also like to mention two other Brazil-supported initiatives aimed at promoting Portuguese in Korea. The Certificate of Proficiency in Portuguese for Foreigners, CELPEBRAS, as we call it, is the official Brazilian exam to certify proficiency in Portuguese as a foreign language. It has been periodically administered in Brazil and abroad since 1993, and specifically in Korea since 2005. The other initiative is the Exchange Program for Foreign Undergraduate Students, PECG, Brazil's largest scholarship program. PECG offers, free of charge, thousands of scholarships annually to undergraduate students from many countries, including Korea, which joined this program last year, 2020. Courses from all university departments are covered, particularly areas in which Brazil is internationally recognized, such as agronomy or bio and medical sciences. It's very difficult to speak with a mask and I'm almost out of breath. <laughs> the details about the program, founded in 1965, are listed at the website of the Embassy of Brazil in Seoul. In order to participate in PECG, a student must pass a CELPEBRAS. Portuguese is considered to be a critical language in Korea because the presence of our language in this country is still very limited. And regular Portuguese language classes are not readily available here. These limitations highlight the huge efforts made by Koreans who decide to learn Portuguese. 
This is especially remarkable given the highly competitive nature of the Korean job market, and more recently, the growing interest of working abroad among Korean young job seekers. For those who are willing to develop their professional career in Brazil, Korean conglomerates with a strong presence there regularly hire employees who speak both Korean and Portuguese. Portuguese is also a language of innovation. For those with an entrepreneurial mindset, Brazil is a country with vast opportunities to start a new business. With a thriving domestic market of more, of more than 210 million people, living in 27 federal states, entrepreneurial Koreans can find good chances to start a business in a variety of sectors. Brazil is also a hotbed of startups. The country counts 12 unicorns, which is slightly above Korea's 11 unicorn. The city of Sao Paulo hosts the most dynamic startup scene in Latin America, being among the world's best 20 start startup cities. <clears throat> Portuguese is also a major language on the internet. It is the fifth most used language online and a major market for social media companies. 130 million Brazilians have Facebook accounts. 100 million Brazilians share their pictures on Instagram. The third countries by number of users after the US and India. And 105 million Brazilians post their videos on YouTube, with 1,800 of them owning channels with more than 1 million followers. All these users are writing, sharing, and communicating in Portuguese. Recent research shows that Brazilians spend, on average, three hours and 40 minutes a day using social networks. Speaking their language is key to understand their needs and interests and to take advantage of all business opportunities related to Brazil. At last but not least, according to UNESCO's estimates, Portuguese is one of the fastest growing European languages after English and has a high potential for growth as an international language in Southern Africa and South America. So I would like to address an invitation to the many young students that are accompanying us tonight, today, to come to Brazil, to study Portuguese and come to Brazil and join the almost 60,000 Koreans who are already there and have chosen Brazil as their new country.